Good evening, everyone. How are you doing today? This is Yusuf Chowdhury. Coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas. All right, just give me, give me like just a few seconds or less than a minute. Shoot in the dark, S.A. Will it rain tomorrow? I don't know, man. I have, uh, haven't checked the, have the, haven't checked the weather. Let me check. <laughs> like will it rain tomorrow? Yeah, it's possible. Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Man, what a beautiful day. 95. Yeah, it's possible. We can't say it will. But it's possible. Shoot in the dark, I say. All right, today's question. Let's see, what is today's question here? What is Facebook face recognition? What the heck? So what is the Facebook... Uh, Facebook face recognition basically what happens when you take a picture of yourself or let's say you're taking a picture with some of your Facebook buddies right so Facebook will be able to recognize and identify those faces if they have a Facebook account of course right then automatically Facebook will basically will send them an alert that if this is you if you want to tag yourself or if this is not you so that's kind of a little bit freaky, right? In order that Facebook will identify who you are. That if you if somebody take a picture on the street and you pass by and you got shot in the in the you know middle of the picture, uh, they can recognize you. Think think about that. You know, it's kind of fascinating yet at the same time kind of freaky, right? So that's what the Facebook uh, face recognition is. Okay, that's what it is. And you can read about, you know, why they're using it, all those other nonsense they're talking about. But if you do want to um, disable it, you have to go to your uh, settings, uh, settings, and you go to settings, then settings and privacy, and look for an option that says face recognition. And from there, you can basically uh, turn it off. That way, Facebook is not going to... Uh, do that if, if if whether you take a picture of somebody else makes sense unless if somebody wants to tag you manually that's different but this is like automatic you know so if I take anybody's picture right now and let's say they are my Facebook friend I would say or maybe not I'm not sure if they don't have to be my Facebook friend then Facebook will be able to identify if they are Facebook users okay all right so that was a good question so what else do we have? What other question do we have for today? Uh, Bruce, what's going on, my man? Didn't people uh, get upset when Google Glass did <laughs> that? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think they did. But, uh, you know, Facebook has it too right now. And I guess nobody, nobody's throwing a fit, right? So, uh, yeah, Google basically did have that on their uh, Google Glass. Uh, what's the other question on here? How to... How to search for a guest posting sites. How to search for guest posting sites. Well, one thing you have to be careful when it comes to like guest posting, which is something I do recommend, but you have to be careful in a sense that you don't want to do the guest posting just for the sake of link building, right? You do want to have a, a content posted on a relevant site based uh, on uh, giving value to that link or to that particular website. You don't want to, do, you don't want to just do it for the... Link, link building process. Uh, 
And if you do that, you have to keep it unique. What I mean by that, you, you're not going to use the same content on several sites as a guest post. So to do that, uh, let's see, what, the, what is this notification? One second. Sorry about that. So in order for you to find sites that can accept uh, guest posts, you can go to Google and type something like, let's say if you're in the yoga industry, you can type yoga guest post by or yoga plus guest post by in the search. Then you will see sites that actually accept guest posting. You can also do your niche, either the keyword and the then after that, guest post or uh, yoga uh, guest article, yoga guest author, or yoga uh, guest contributor. So when you go to Google, if, if you want to find out if any websites out there, blogs or other high-ranking sites that can accept guest posting, that's one way for you um, to do that is basically to search uh, by using the, the keyword of your niche, then after that you can put guest post by, guest author, guest article, or uh, uh, guest uh, contributor. So that's how you're gonna actually uh, find it. Brian, you must have watched my interview with Andrew and Taylor. I honestly did not, Brian. I missed it, but if you, if you still have it there, why don't you go ahead and uh, share it on the comment section. Go ahead and share that link uh, the interview that you got with the, that you had with Andrew and Taylor. Why, why don't you go ahead and share that uh, on in the comment section so we can uh, so I can check it and all the viewers can also check it later on. Okay, so go ahead and uh, please do that. Go ahead and share the link. That would be good for everybody to see it. Okay. Are you putting the link, my friend? Are you putting the link? Leslie, what's going on? Thank you for tuning in. How are you? How you doing? You got any questions for me? But it's like working on it. <laughs> okay. Keep working on it, man. Yeah, for sure. If you share the link, then we're all going to uh, check it later on. Okay, let's see what else we got here. See any questions today? Any more questions? All right, there you go, folks. So Brian Gibbs uh, posted a live session he did with, uh, I believe, two SEO experts. So make sure you all uh, check it out. Uh, okay, so Leslie says, what resource would you recommend as a crash course on Facebook ads? Like essential strategies, things to know, things to factor in for clients' ads. Excellent question. Leslie, well, I have several uh, recommendations. Several recommendations. The first one is, you probably heard of it, right? It's the, uh, the facebook.com slash blueprint, which is from Facebook themselves. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, your book. There you go. Go ahead and plug in your book, Brian. Go ahead and put your book as well. Go ahead and put your Amazon book about a crash course on Facebook. You can also go to facebook.com slash blueprint. These are the training from uh, Facebook themselves directly. 
Leslie, okay. The second thing is one of my favorite dudes. Uh, one of my favorite dudes, uh, John Loomer. G-J-O-N. John Loomer. Let me share this with you real quick. Uh, let's see. John Loomer. Chris, my man, what's going on, bro? What's up, buddy? How you been? How you been, my man? Uh, let's see here. So, Lester was asking me the crash course. I and mean, the thing is, really, it's up to you. I mean, this you can find a lot of stuff from you. So, John Loomer, this dude right here, we basically, I had my team take some of his course, and it's very good. I mean, you can actually learn a lot of stuff from his uh, blog, okay? So, that's uh, John Loomer. Okay. So you can definitely click on this free video series. In fact, he's giving some, uh, uh, let's see. So there you go, Brian's link. He wrote a book. Brian Gibbs is one of my uh, uh, digital marketing uh, associate business partners. So you can definitely check his uh, book on Facebook. Uh, it's really good. You can also look into John Loomer. He's offering free courses on uh, uh, Facebook advertising. You can also go to the facebook.com slash blueprint or business. And from there, you will have um, all the courses on Facebook advertising. And they're very short videos, so it's coming from them directly. When it comes to strategies, then you, you might want to check on Brian's book. You can also check John Loomer. So he started to offer like a, uh, some sort of, I mean, his blog is amazing. If you just read his blog post, the content itself is super amazing. Okay, and my team basically took his course and, you know, we've been utilizing his lessons with our clients. So I highly recommend him as well. Okay, so those should be enough unless, you know, you have LinkedIn account. So LinkedIn has an access to lynda.com. You can also go to lynda.com and um, what you call it, uh, get those courses there. But uh, but Leslie, you are in uh, SA, right? Because uh, there is another organization called, uh, if you're in San Antonio, there's another organization. Uh, it's called Biblio, Bibliotech. So it's like a digital library. So once you become a member of a Bibliotech, there's no cost for it to become a member. I even have the, the, you know, the card for Bibliotech. Once you become a member of Bibliotech, you can have access to lynda.com and Vite and what else? Uh, Treehouse Unlimited for free. So you can check that as well. Uh, been good. Uh, I was trying to embed a YouTube live with Chad into a password protected WordPress page last night and couldn't get the chat working. Hmm, was the chat uh, part of uh, YouTube or is it the third party tool that you're using, uh, Chris? Let's see, wizard. What is that? What is this wizard? What is it? Wizard? Wizard? Let me just take the link real quick. Here we go. Leslie, most welcome. Let me know, uh, Leslie. Uh, wow, well, it's not even coming up. Like, what is this? The website is not coming up. It says service unavailable. What is this? Huh, Chris? What is this? Uh, Leslie, you let me know if I was able to answer your question. Oh, in the Caribbean? Sorry, Leslie. But yeah, that <laughs> the bibliotheque. I mean, but if you have LinkedIn, you can. Within LinkedIn, you have an option to access Linda. So you have some free um, courses within LinkedIn, and some of them I think you have to pay for it. But as far as you check the facebook.com slash blueprint, John Loomer, or if you want to buy Brian's book, feel free. Uh, so, Chris, uh, the link is not coming up. I have this service unavailable. The service is simply unable to serve the request due to the maintenance of the downtime or capacity problem. Please try again later. What happened to your website, bro? What happened here? Your connection to this side is not secure. It is not coming up, my friend. Chris, uh, did you have uh, embedded enabled from YouTube? That's a good question from Bruce. So Bruce is asking this question, Chris. He's asking this question. He's asking this question. Did you 
embed or have embed 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 enable from YouTube. Uh, all right, so this one is not secure. So what should I do? What should I do? Reload. For some reason, Chris, I'm not able to pull your website. Uh, Wizard Broadcasting. I am not able to pull your website. What is going on? This is not acceptable, my friend. This is not acceptable. Do, 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 do. So this is your face. I'll put your brand name, Wizard Broadcasting, but the website didn't come. That's not good either. That means your website is not properly indexed. So you have to use a Google Search Console to do a sitemap submission. That way, when anybody types your brand name, it should show up. So Bruce, Chris said, yes, I did. The YouTube player worked fine, but chat didn't. Hmm. I don't know what caused the problem. Uh, were you, were you getting any type of errors, Chris? Were you getting, getting any type of errors? Uh, why don't you have your website on your business page? Uh, why don't you have a website on your business page, my friend? Why? Why you don't have a, a website on your just an email? What is what is this? This is Messenger. Yeah, I put up the site last night. I'm going to look at it now. Okay, but uh, even on your business page, I mean, you should have the website right here too. That's what I was looking for. Okay, but for some reason, it's not working. Like when I go to the website. So you have to check with your hosting that uh, 500 error. Mark, what's going on? Thank you for uh, liking the live streaming. I appreciate it, my man. I appreciate it. Okay, now there you go. That is weird. Is that the one? Uh, what is this? The domain was pointing to Facebook. Just need to update. Okay. I was like, again, I'm, I'm looking at this like, what is this? <laughs> right? By the way, it's pretty cool. Nice logo. Uh, was it direct from YouTube or was it a third party? Uh, Chris said it's, uh, it's direct from YouTube. I was having some trouble with SS. Okay, that's, that's it. Click here to log in. Huh. Why? What do you mean log in? I'm not signed up to log in. And there you go. Back to service and available. Okay, so you might want to check with your hosting, my friend. You got the four, uh, 503 error. What does 503 error mean? Uh, the 503 error code. Uh, unable error the, the HTTP response uh, status code indicating that the server is temporarily un unable to handle the request. This may be due to the server being overloaded or down for maintenance. So that's what you have right now. So you might want to check for a hosting provider. So Chris basically said it's an event page only for the moment. Let's go, Ted. What's going on, my man? Hey, Ted, I'm in town. I'm in my office right now. You want to stop by? My friend, you want to stop by, Ted? <laughs> You're like, let's go. Come on, man. You know where we're at. Uh, 5460 uh, Babcock Road, suite number 120. Hurry up before I leave. I'm going to leave like around um, after I'm done with this live streaming. <laughs> so... Well, I'm here right now. <laughs> like, what time? I'm here right now. So, if you want to stop by, well, I got to leave after seven. Got some stuff to do. But uh, if you're available tomorrow or this weekend, let me know. All right. So, you can come to my office. You know, you can chill. You know, talk about your uh, crazy adventures and whatnot. All right. I'm usually here like in and out. I come in the morning or afternoon, then I go to my other client's office and stay there till I do my live streaming. And sometimes I do it from here. So it's like uh, shifty. So all you have to do is just kind of text me and just tell me, hey, are you there? I'm not, then I'm going to let you know I'm here. Make sense? I think I have some weird DNS issues. Going to call the hosting. Yes, Chris, please double check with your hosting. Double check with your hosting for sure. 
double check with your hosting yes absolutely do you build out funnels uh i just need a, sh a shuffle and a dirt then i can you know dig that ground and build a funnel like a tunnel you know what i mean yeah i can do that <laughs> yes if you're talking about like a lead pages yes we we do that for sure we build funnels sell funnels uh, sell bucket bucket funnels we do that for sure as you know i run a digital marketing agency that does all that work for our customers right we do all that yesterday somebody asked me about the funnel and i was basically saying that the cell funnel doesn't mean every business needs to have it some business don't require a cell funnel right so it depends on what do they exactly want to use it for you know what i mean you know what i mean okay uh do we have any more questions here do we have any more questions any more questions folks any more questions indeed indeed okay i'm a question now let's see okay the other question is local SEO signals. And lastly, would you recommend uh, funnels for digital marketing agency? Sure. I mean, when a, let's say a customer comes to your digital um, website, and, and it depends how you want to do it. Like mine, the way I have it, because let's say, and I'm going to change it a little bit soon. Uh, it goes back to the objective like what do you want to achieve from the funnel like what is the objective what is the objective right so this is my company page so right here i have uh request a quote right once they click on the request a quote basically it goes to this questionnaire they fill up all this information this will give us an idea what exactly the customer wants they will follow up understand their business, give them a custom price and estimate, and try to close the deal. That's about it. I'm not interested to grab their name and email addresses to uh, send them, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, content and whatnot for my type of business because I'm only interested for somebody who's already ready and know what they want in terms of like digital marketing or website, biz uh, website services and whatnot. That's my strategy, right? So I, I basically go straight, they're interested, I, I follow up with we follow up with them do a custom uh, strategy plan prices and we close the deal that's it some that I've even worked with so many uh, advertising agencies that most of them don't even have a single funnel but they do have clients that pays them like millions of dollars a year make sense so it really depends some agency will do something like uh, let's say you can do a strategy and I did this a while back where I can collect the name and email and website to do an uh, on-page SEO audit that's one option or I can just send them good content on a weekly basis maybe on the fourth week I can do that closing the deal so that's another option too so it's really up to you which one works for you it's, it's all about a B testing uh, and there's nothing wrong if you have the funnel for your digital market agency of course it can work if you want the target audience come in Let's say somebody wants to hire you for Google advertising. So there are some customer that already knows that they want Google advertising expert and they're just going to hire you right away. They, they just want to know, see some case study and how you're going to run it. And that, they're not interested in your content, read your content. Now know how this thing work. For them, maybe you can send them a couple of videos and a couple of content until they get educated. Educated. Then after that, they will, they're going to go ahead and make, make the deal. Make sense? So that's what I'm saying. The so-called funnel is good because one of the benefit of having some sort of landing pages or lead pages, especially if you grab name and email addresses, that's very good, right? So you can uh, continue with them later. So for consultant, like if you specialize in, let's say if you specialize only in training and uh, coaching, for sure you can capture the name and email, give them some sort of uh, value, like how, they, how can they improve their business if they apply X and Y and Z uh, through the local, let's say Google My Business page. Uh, once they see the uh, offer, the educational tips that you're sharing with them, they can do it by themselves. And after that, they will probably have you do all the work for them. So it really depends. There are some customers, they just want the service. They don't care about what they're going to learn and read. And there are some that really don't know and they might be interested. So you have to run it both ways. So in my situation, the leads that I get, 
I basically uh, show them exactly uh, like what they want when they when they when they opt in, and from there we basically call, uh, quickly follow up and try to close the deal. That's about it. So it depends. Okay, so there's no right and wrong answer. It depends on how you're gonna run it. If you have a digital agency or digital marketing agency that you offer something amazing like a case study white paper to show them how amazing that that is. And from there, you can convert them. Because what happens if they don't convert? Let's say they don't convert convert, and they don't want to hire you. What's the point of keeping their email and phone numbers? They're, un, they're not interested. They're probably not going to even receive your emails anymore. Does that make sense? Okay. So, yeah. But you can give it a test, Leslie. I mean, you can give it a try. Uh, it's good to capture leads and see how that works. Um, let's see. Let's see. Do you uh, come on the... Uh, Bruce, do you come uh, on the same time every day? Yes, I, I, I go live 6 p.m. I try my best to be at 6 p.m. Central Time, Monday to Friday. Except Sunday, I do another session with my business partner from Chicago at 4 p.m. And uh, do you offer done-for-you services and done with you as well? Yes, I mean, some agencies, some advertising agencies, they hire us. They hire our com my company to do the digital marketing because they're used to the traditional, right? And we do stuff on the under the India agreement, so that means I'll do work for the clients, and I don't share the client information anywhere on website anywhere else. But we do their back, you know, everything from the back end. Yes, I do that. In fact, there are some small businesses they actually grab, uh, they they basically close a deal with prospect and leads. Then I'll do all the work and I give the estimate, and they can you know double the price and uh, close the deal. Uh, whatever they charge, they will pick that portion of the money, and I basically charge what I whatever I gave as a cost value. Does that make sense, Ted? Yeah, I do that. So you are saying I can partner with you? Ab absolutely, man. Just just go direct. Yes, you can do that. If you find somebody that needs help with website development, the search engine, Google Ads, you just let me know. We will analyze when you how to uh, ask questions and qualify them. I'll give you an estimate. Let's say if this project costs, uh, hypothetically speaking, like five grand, you can charge the customer eight or ten, and we'll close the deal. And, and, and if the customer wants to know who is doing it, all you can say that I have a team and I can be part of your company as a team member. We can go and meet them and educate them, do some uh, onboarding, and uh, we'll close the deal. Why not? That way, Ted, you don't have to do all, all the work. All you have to do is just close the deal and be the middle person to go back and forth in terms of like updates and follow-ups and reports and whatnot. Does that make sense? Uh, Brian, what would you, uh, Brian Gibbs, what would your audience be interested in hearing an interview about? I'm looking for the next few weeks. That is a good question. If, if anybody wants, if y'all want to have, uh, what, what, what do y'all want to learn? Uh, Brian Gibbs does uh, amazing interviews with some of the expert in the digital marketing field. So if you all have any topic, please share that, put in the comments so Brian can go ahead and, and, and set that up. So Ted said that makes sense. Yes. So that's what I do, man. Some people want to start a digital marketing service and I can teach you how to do it. Or you can just, if you can find a customer, let us do all the work and you can still make money. Okay. Like good money. But of course, make sure that you grab a qualified uh, businesses that been in business for like more than five to more than five years or maybe ten years because those kind of those kind of businesses are established they have enough money to uh, spend you know what I mean video marketing we we do that Facebook live marketing no problem we will do it except for breakdance except for breakdance so uh, Brian so Ted is giving some uh, ideas subjects video marketing a subject on video marketing uh, Facebook live streaming marketing. Uh, Ted, we did one with Greg uh, Rollett a couple of weeks ago. Greg, uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead and check, 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 post the one that you did so Ted can follow up and check. It was really a good session. Uh, what are some of the recommended businesses uh, to go after? If you're going to go after, look for businesses that, like I said, they, they've been in business for more than five years. Five to ten years because if you get a startup most of the startup don't have money unless if they have seed funding from investors and whatnot most of the startup don't have money a business that started for a year they're not gonna pay you enough so anybody that's been in business for more than five years up to ten those kind of business you're gonna look for secondly maybe like attorneys uh, high-end um, uh, what do you call it uh, uh, construction companies build home building companies, uh, luxury real estate agents uh, what else? 
uh, medical uh, companies, right? Those are the ones that can, you know, get you uh, get you good money. So Brian basically put his Facebook page, uh, Focus Media. So go ahead and check out Focus. Uh, I'm sorry, Focus Idea. Focus Idea. You can watch all his uh, interviews and videos right there. Okay. It is uh, 6.30 p.m. Central Time right here in San Antonio, Texas. Do you all have any more questions for me? Any more questions? Do you all have any more questions? Yeah. So if you can find those sort of clients, so thanks for letting me hijack your live views. Anytime, man. Dang hijacker. <laughs> so anytime, bro, for sure. Yeah, I mean, so uh, Ted, again, any any clients, and we have to qualify them. What I mean by qualify them, I have several questions uh, to ask to you know get to know the business and uh, what is their objective, what do they want to achieve. You know, for example, how many sales they are getting, how many leads they are getting. Uh, what are the challenges? You know, we need all this information so we can, you know, do a proper custom estimate. You know what I mean? Based on their needs and based on what's working and based on the challenges that they're going through. And after that, we can give them the best option, which direction we can help them with to increase their business revenue. Make sense? So so look for those kind of clients. And uh, But if you need a, if you go to my website under the get a request quote, I can give you a copy of PDF, not PDF, a work document about the web questionnaire. Uh, maybe some of the documents on the SEO part or, or, or online ads. So you can definitely learn that and you can, you know, sh share with your prospect. You know what I mean? Because the most important thing is that uh, it's not just about selling your digital marketing services. You really have to know what do they exactly want and what challenges they're going through because they need a solution. So you have to provide a solution for them, not just aesthetic and looks and design and whatnot. So that's very, very important. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's why it takes some time for us to get to know the customer, the, the ideal prospect, and do some research and go back and forth several times until we close the deal. And it depends on the project. You know, there are some deals that can require monthly payment, and there are some just like, you know, initial phases or just one-time fee, like, you know, website development, for example, or graphic designs. But when it comes to, like, running online ads, uh, search engine ads, like, you know, Google, Bing ads or social media ads, that's like a monthly re recurring payments. Uh, search engine, same thing. Social media management and strategies, a monthly recurring payment. Maintenance for the sites or uh, management. Those are the monthly, and those, and those are the good ones, really, because that's where the money can come to you on a monthly basis. The, the website project is good, but the issue with the website project, you can get a good chunk of money on the front. But when it comes to monthly, it's all about just maintenance. And some clients don't even need the maintenance because they have their own hosting and they can let the hosting take care of it. Uh, unless if they pay for the hosting, uh, I'm sorry, for the maintenance, then that's not like more than one or two hundred dollars a month. Uh, yes, uh, Brian, you have to understand their pain points. When you sit with any clients or prospect that want to utilize your service, sometimes they don't know what is, what is the issue, right? If you don't know what they are, uh, manufacture them, they might not even know what their pain points are. So you have to ask them the right questions. So for example, when a prospect comes to me, the, the question I ask, like first, the first question is, what are the main challenges you are facing right now? Okay. Then I ask them, uh, let's say if they say X, Y, and Z, good. Secondly, how many leads you are getting on a monthly basis? So just give me like a rough number. If they say 100, great. Then how many do you want? If they say 200, great. Then the next, then the third question, the third question going to be, what is your lowest price rate for your lead, and what's the highest? What I mean by that, the the service that you provide, what's the least price, and what's the highest price? If they say 250 is the least price, 
and 2000 is the highest great then how many of the leads that you get are what's the percentage of how many of the leads that you get with the least price and how many percent with the highest price excellent you have to get this all this information so you will give an idea how much money they're making because they're not going to tell you up front how much they're making and the information that they gave you that give you the information that they give you uh, it's just an estimate it's not like a, an exact uh number so if they say 100 low price and 50 higher price you can do the math after that <clears throat> what, what what do they want to achieve if they want additional 100 great do they want it uh, in a six month or a one year or do they want it like as soon as possible? If it's as soon as possible, then that means you have to run ads, Google, uh, Google ads, Bing advertising, Facebook and social media ads. If they want to utilize both, which is the online advertising and the organic search engine optimization, which is a monthly task and social media for brand awareness, that's also a monthly task. It can take us anywhere between, you know, 27 to uh, 50, 55 hours per month just to do SEO part of it. Imagine the social media part of it, right? So you can add all this in, into into your math and see what, how, how much it comes up, right? Then you provide the solution. He, here are the options, the priorities, and the stuff that you know doesn't have to be doesn't have to be like right now. So you show them the strategies, the priorities, the estimate, the plan, everything, and you also have to educate them what does each of these plan mean. Right, so they will have a clear understanding and idea, and the expectation whether they're going to get the report, they're going to see what's happening, and in fact, we also have to have an open communication where if they if the lead numbers increases, then we need to know are they closing it, are they able to close it, are they benefiting benefiting from it or not, because if they're getting the leads and, and they're not closing, or if they're getting the leads but they're not relevant or qualified, then we have to go back and tweak and adjust the ad to make sure that they they are getting the the correct prospect and leads. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, which is the best way to go? Absolutely. All right. So, yeah. So, let me know if y'all have any more questions about online marketing, digital marketing. Is there any more? Qu oh, I'm sorry. There was a question about what are the, uh, sorry about that. It took me a while. What are, what are the, local uh, SEO signal hmm. so when it comes to local SEO signals I mean the first thing really is you have to dominate and claim the local listing okay you have to dominate and claim the local listing that's the first thing which is uh, I mean Google my business page of course but you can go to moz.com slash local from there it will show you if you are listed on one of the top 10 local listing site so that's the first one that's what the local listing for the SEO signal is right uh, link signals or the review signal so reviews on these pages consider a signal the on-page optimization of your website for the local business or the location based pages that's also a signal citation basically means if you submit your business on a a niche based directories that can be considered a signal for the local SEO and the conversation within the social media about you locally. So if people talk about you locally for your business, for your restaurant, for your office, for your services, those are considered some of the, um, what you call it, signal for local SEO. Okay, make sense? So that's what the uh, some of the signals are for the local SEO. But don't forget, the most important thing is that you have to claim uh, those local listings and there's so many websites out there. I think they're like more than hundreds But you can just use Moz for right now and just dominate or grab the top 10 at least like the Google my business page and Facebook and Yelp and super pages and uh, hot frog and and whatnot Make sense All right All right, so uh, do we have any more questions it is 639 Central time. Doo, 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 doo. Are there any more question?
No more questions. All right. Okay, I'm going to wait for like a minute or two. If nobody says anything, then I will bounce. All right, folks, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'd highly appreciate it. If you all enjoyed watching this again, don't forget to share it and tag some of your cool colleagues and friends. All right, and I'll see you back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Time. Bye-bye for now.